This is the Evolution Tools Evo Saw 180 HD. Here's the unboxing. That's what's in the box. Brand new. So Evolution Tools did not give me this saw to review. This is my saw. I purchased it myself. The saw comes with extra brushes and a vacuum port and the hex key for the blade change. And what comes in place of the vacuum port is a flat plug, which I'm going to remove. It comes with a blade. The blade is already installed. And I am going to, it also comes with guide and I am going to replace now the, I'm taking the plug out because shavings can build up in here and they have no place to go so I'm putting this vacuum hose attachment plug in place of the closed off plug. There's no hole in this. It's just completely closed off and it completely plugs that hole. Here's uh, what it looked like after I made the cut. You can see where there's no build up here, but there is build up there and in a couple of other small little places in, in here. But then mainly everything is caught in this shroud it's designed this way and uh, this is how I emptied it out and that did empty it out when I make the cut you'll see that um, you know that's where the chips go but what you can't see I guess is that there really are chips flying everywhere not a large amount but there are chips that don't get caught in this but the shrouds pretty good I mean it it does the job and uh, I, I think it's a good design and um, I, I was I was happy with the chip collection okay so what we're gonna do today with the Evo saw 180 HD is we're gonna modify this metal bender so this is my uncle's metal bender. This was built for him by uh, a blacksmith, a local blacksmith. He's retired now and he built things very, very heavy, which was okay because the bender at the time it was made, it had specific purposes in mind, which required heavy gauge steel to be bended but now we just need to make some custom flashing and this overhang is about two times too much so we're gonna cut this we're gonna cut this much off of this bender so that we can get some more life out of it we're gonna hit some welds under here and uh, we're gonna cut right through them with the blade and I think I'm going to try to use the parallel guide. Typically on saws, these parallel guides can be a little hit and miss. Um, this saw does have a riving knife. I'm also a little concerned about the riving knife because, uh, you know, everything's got to be perfectly parallel so that things aren't binding on the saw blade, making a long cut like this but we're gonna try it. So the, the parallel seems pretty good once we get it dialed in. And whoops, okay, let's see here. The parallel guide's gonna be on the wrong side. So we can, I believe we can flip the parallel. Okay, the parallel guide will work on either side, except it's gonna hit so I cannot use the parallel guide, so we're not using the 
like that. I don't have enough clearance for it. I barely have enough clearance to make the cut that I want to make. Hearing protection is essential with this saw and good eyewear and eye protection and a full face shield would have been better. But I do have um, safety goggles on that are fully sealed around my eyes. There are chips that do fly up into your face and so you've got to prepare for that. No, that's the that's the uh, riving knife is just starting to go into the cut. Let me see where I am on my line. All right, I'm not parallel with my line. So that worries me. I'm gonna to have to make sure that I don't dive in here. Let's see if I can correct. We're still on the line. I was able to correct my, my line. I was getting a little out of parallel with my mark. And I was able to correct um, by, by putting gentle pressure uh, to kind of skew it back on parallel. Start to smell like uh, some not burning plastic, but it's hot. Something's hot. I'm gonna check my video, make sure I'm recording. Decided to let the saw cool down. I needed to change the battery in the camera, and my uncle had the very good idea of clamping up the drop piece of steel, which is very heavy. It's three eighths thick, by the way. Here we go, let's try this again. We got the, the drop piece clamped up. I'm just taking it really easy through this thick steel. I don't want to overheat the saw, I'm not really pushing super hard into it. I'm letting the saw blade do the work. You can see there's a lot of chips coming off that don't get caught in the um, chip collecting shroud, but the chip collecting shroud does actually work quite well. Um, I don't know how saws like this could possibly catch all the chips. I'm happy with the chip collection on this saw. I'm, it probably would have been much better if I would have used the va a vacuum cleaner, but I didn't want the extra hoses in the way, and and uh, I didn't really feel it outdoors like this. I needed to have the, the vacuum hooked up to it anyway, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the performance of the saw. My first impressions of the saw are that it felt solid and fairly well built. And I did feel that it got a little hot, but considering the duty cycle I'm pushing it at here, it was good to give it a rest once in a while. I'm just going to let it cool off a little bit. Oh, like right here? Yeah, let's clamp that in there. Yeah, that's going to be a, that'll be a hard one on the toes when that falls. Okay, here we go. Let's finish this cut. Hopefully I've swerved out enough to get the clearance from this. 
Truth be told that at this point, I did have to start pushing off on skew to get it away from the line a little bit. And uh, that creates some less than ideal forces on the blade and the riving knife, but the saw handled it and it performed. Well, the saw survived. That was definitely a heavy duty cut. I could smell, I could smell something getting warm. Um, but uh, yeah, what a champ. I mean, that, uh, this, the saw did the deal. Let's do a temperature measurement. I'm getting like one, 113 has been my max reading. So there's just, there's little to no heat build up at all on this cut. Um, of course, the, the part that I just cut is at this end. Okay, I did get a 114 down here at this end. A one, oh, I got a 130. I got a 130, so it's a little, yeah, there, where I just cut is a little warm. Down here is already cooled off. There we go. We have just modified this so we can get some more life out of it. Let's take a close up of the quality of that cut is pretty awesome. Very nice. Be very difficult to get that kind of a nice smooth cut with a band, port a band or being very gentle. I really don't want any metal slivers. I'm just very carefully brushing away the shavings so that we can see that nice edge. Wow, that is that is really nice. Okay, so we just cut through. What thickness is this? 0.384 0.389 inches. Let's see, what's that? 25 64ths of a fraction. 25 64ths. Okay. So that's good thick steel. And this was uh, 58 inches, I think it was? 60. 60, yeah. It's about 60 inches long. We did uh, stop the saw a couple of times just to let things cool down because that's a uh, pretty torturous duty cycle. The Evo Saw 180 HD really was the ideal tool for this job. Um, plasma cutter with this much wood around would have been a little risky. I did bring my Milwaukee Porta band with me, but I don't think that it would have worked because of the clearances with the handle, the bender handle. This was really the right tool for the job. The saw performed well, and the quality and accuracy of that cut just couldn't be matched. Very happy. And that's my review. Thanks for watching.